think um, that's one area like people definitely go wrong with their investing making sure that that they're only betting on the long side and you talked about some other mistakes people make the idea of you know not having appropriate stops in place and that sort of thing but having worked with you know hundreds of clients what what are some of the big mistakes that you're seeing people make when they're investing well one they get too attached to a position they they go oh you know i love russia i like russia too we've done very well out of russia over the last few years well last year excluded or the year before that but up until then we did very very well seriously i had some clients that um went into a a, an extremely speculative um russia fund they went in with a hundred thousand dollars and over a five-year period they were able to turn that to 1.5 million so they did very very well yeah yeah but right now they come to me and say we want to go into russia i say no and that's just me at the moment commodities are turning down other things um so yeah falling in love with a position is a very bad thing you know? yeah it's, it's it's all about the money it's no emotion and it's hard to be that way yeah yeah you know uh, other people say oh you should never put your stops in the market because then other people know well that's good if you've got willpower but me if i don't have my stop in and i have just a mental stop saying oh i've got in a hundred dollars when it gets to to eighty four dollars i'm going to sell if i didn't have my stop in then it happened automatically i'll find a reason why i shouldn't sell and that's me and i've been doing this for years yeah yeah. so i i personally like to see people with stops in the market at any given time and also obviously raising them and that's another thing they don't always raise them up afterwards yeah yeah um buy buy and hold which i refer to as buy and hope is basically dead for the next 20 maybe 30 years and, and again i come back to demographics for the reason for that but looking back at the dow over the last decade was the worst since i think 1820s and it's only the worst since the 1820s because that's when accurate record keeping began records were kept before then but they may not have been as, as accurate I mean, look, I've got Jeremy Siegel's book, Stocks for Long Run, and that's the, the Bible of, of the buy and hold strategy. And I've, I've got it here, and I refer to it on occasion. But you can't, the market we're in at the moment, you can't just put it in and hope for the best. And anybody that enters the Dow or any of the other market indices or, or the markets right now, expecting it to do a repeat of last year is going to be severely disappointed. Yeah. I think... Um, Sorry. No, 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 no. You, well, like, you touched on some, some really good points on, on where people go wrong. Like... You, having quite an extensive history and, and having done a lot of reading and um, to get to where you are now looking back over your career if you think about you know were there any key points leverage points where you can look back and go once i started to do this that's when i really started to see an increase or an improvement in the way that you're investing your personal investing is going oh uh, well, the, okay the, the, the first thing was the demographics um, I'm very grateful to, to learning about Harry S. Dent and look I mean he doesn't always get it right but hell who does you know if you want to always be right then don't say anything um, otherwise you're gonna be wrong on occasion but his demographics showing showing that you can predict long-term market movements and what the economy is going to do way into the future by understanding demographics yeah. And that's why you can go, okay, well, China, people think is great, but I say, hang on, China's going to be more like Japan. They've got a one-child policy. They basically got rid of most of their girls because the boys were going to support them in their old age. So now they have an imbalance of um, 32 million more men than women mm. in the marrying age coming in the next five to 10 years. And 60 Minutes actually put it at about 40 million more men than women. So you've got this imbalance. And so basically that means that there's going to be civil unrest. On top of that, they're, they're aging, so China's maybe not the place to be long term. Yeah. China's not going to be the economic superpower to take over the mantle from the US. Mm. Which everything, everybody's hoping. You don't no, see it as a no, if I was going to look at anyone, I'd look at India for that, because India has 70% of their population under age 35. Yeah. Um, the difference also, and I make this point quite often, is the Chinese imitate the Indians innovate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it's not a racial thing. I mean, it's just a fact. The Chinese can take something that exists, make it better and make it cheaper. The Indians can look at it, make it better, but make it and then, and then take another step or two above that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Already we're seeing, like I've read some of the statistics in, again, one of your very early newsletters and you were talking about, you know, the way that telecommunications are exploding and all the different industries and everything that's going to come out of India. Mm. Um, that being one of the emerging economies, is that something, an area that you're still looking to invest into or are you I, bearish on, or <laughs> on the, the, the global front? Do you see that, you know, not as rosy? 
the last time round when the markets tanked and the US went down, Australia went down, everyone went down, the emerging markets lost more because there's, there's panic, there's a flight to safety and you saw the US dollar rally and, and things like that. So if I'm right about seeing a, a, a fairly substantial correction, I don't really want to call it a crash but it's not going to be pretty for people that aren't expecting it. Um, I think that it's better to be out of those markets or have very tight stocks and then once we're through this, then we can go back in there. Because I mean, Shivers, one of the Russian funds we deal with did 107% last year. I actually, in my newsletter, the November before that, I said, look, this is my case for Russia and I like Russia for these reasons. So I gave guys a heads up on that. Um, you know, China did well this year, India did well, well, this, this, this last year. And so you see what happened, like we've had a dress rehearsal. So mm -hmm. when the markets tank, what's gonna come roaring back? Yeah, yeah, the emerging economies too. Yeah. Yeah. But they're just going to be hurt more on the downside before they come back. And the other interesting thing was to note the, 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 the strong correlation between the falls in the Aussie markets and the US, it's almost to the percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interested to see what happens in Australia, obviously, for obvious reasons, mm. being there, and that feels like we've avoided it thus far. Um, I, I know um, you mentioned Harry S. Dent, someone that you keep an eye on, and you read a lot of uh, newsletters <laughs> and research and what are some other areas that you're drawing on to help form your conclusions? Well first of all I basically spend about six hours a day research. Um, I read one new book a week at least plus then obviously the Harry S. Dents for their stuff. I like um, Bob Prechter's Elliott Wave stuff. Not as much to say this is what's going to happen but it's just an interesting point of view. He's very good to look at for the deflation camp. I like um, I think it's Gary, Gary Schilling or whatever. I think he's a good economist to follow. Um, Steve Keen in Australia, again, um, I think he's great as well because he understands deflation. Um, yeah, but lots and lots of different places. There's, there's a heap of people. Um, for, from a trading perspective, I still like um, Livermore. I like um, it's a reminiscence of a stock operator. Operator, yeah. yeah, I like that. I love the WDD GAN stuff. Even now, I refer back to the GAN, the old GAN books written in 1929, 1930, to see because basically they're saying that, that history, uh, to quote Mark Twain, that history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. Yeah. So if you can understand what's happening, what's happened before will happen again in a slightly different way, but the underlying factor is still people are still people, and we still react the same way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, you're definitely someone people should keep an eye on as well. So if, if they want to find out more about you, I'll make sure I post a, a link um, at the bottom of the video. But it'll be davidjennings.com forward slash global because Andre is all about global investing. And um, if you want to find out more, you can uh, click through the link and you can find out how to get a free uh, month uh, newsletter um, of his uh, underground investment secrets, investment secrets, which is um, something that I'm a subscriber to and uh, would recommend that you do the same. But Andre, I'd just like to thank you for your time. No I appreciate it. My pleasure. And uh, we'll see what happens in 2010. It'll be a fun year.